Today's video is all about buying a new home in Marietta, Georgia. If you're looking to buy a new home in Marietta, Georgia, this video is for you. I'm going to go over some steps of some things that you'll want to keep in mind, some key uh, key facts, some things that if you do, your move will be a lot smoother than if you don't. So let's start looking at the steps right now. living in Atlanta, Georgia channel. If you're new to this channel, it's all about what it's like to live in Atlanta, Georgia and surrounding areas. If you're not new here, welcome back. I'm Dan Hillsman. I'm a real estate broker. I've, I've been helping people with their moves to Atlanta, Georgia and surrounding areas for many years and I'm happy to help you too. You can give me a call, send me a text, an email or schedule a Zoom call using the calendar link in the description below. However you want to get a hold of me, I've got your back when making a move to Marietta, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, Powder Springs, Georgia, and all the surrounding areas. Step number one is your timeline. You're gonna to wanna to be super aware of and continuously get updates from the builder about your timeline. So you wanna get with your, if you have an agent representing you, which I recommend you do, if you have a buyer's agent, or if you're talking with the builder or the on-site agent directly, you're gonna to wanna to check on the closing date, of course, at the time of the contract. You're also gonna to wanna to check on that around the time the foundation's laid to see if they're still on track. Uh, maybe when the uh, framing's up or the drywall's in, it's another great time to check on the closing date. Are you still gonna close on time? Then also when the cabinets in, are in and the flooring's in. Another great time to ask, hey, are we still on schedule to close on time? Another key question is toward the end you wanna ask, is it does it look like they'll have the co the certificate of occupancy in time for you to close on time you need to know this especially if you have a time frame of moving out of the house or, or home that you're already in so if you have a home to sell or if your lease is about to be up super important to time this just right right so um by making the the your agent the builder the on-site agent whoever you need whoever's you're talking with or representing you Make sure that they're aware to continuously check on those timelines. You need to have a plan B, right? So just in case something happens, where are you gonna live for a little while until the home's uh, finished and ready to be occupied? Can you live with family? Can you live with friends? Are you gonna get a hotel, extended stay? Do we have a plan B? So hopefully you won't ever have to use the plan B, but it's great knowing that you may need a plan B when making a move to a new construction property, especially with the, um, you know, sometimes it's just weather. If the weather's too bad for too long of a period of time, then especially in the foundation laying stage, that can knock things off or your timeline off pretty bad, um, but also supply chain issues. So just continuously check to make sure that your closing's still on time. And if not, you wanna have a plan B. Hopefully you won't have to use it, but it's better to have one than not. Now let's look at the next step. All right, one of the next things you want to consider when buying a new home married is yours. If you have a home to sell and you're not under contract yet, or if it hadn't been listed yet, you may want to consider trying to negotiate a up to three month lease back period from the people that are buying your home. This doesn't always work, but it doesn't hurt to ask. And if you can pull that off, then that could help too if you have concerns about closing on time on the new construction property. Something else I want you to strongly consider is the rate lock. So it, you need to check with your lender to see how long the lock is good for. And if you're getting close to the time that your lock's gonna expire, you need to see if you can extend that lock or what does that look like, right? So the last thing that you want to have happen is you're having a home built, you're pre-approved, your rate's locked, construction gets pushed back, closing date gets pushed back past the time that your interest rate lock timeline is. So if you get close to that timeline, you need to reach out to the lender and see what you don't want to have happen is that lock to expire if the rates go up. You may have to bring more money to closing. You may have to pay off a car. You may not be qualified. So you don't want to go through this whole long process of buying this home and mess up on the rate lock scenario. So if you ask a great reason, reach out to me if you need help with that or if you want to answer, have some more questions answered. If you're not currently being represented, you can reach out to me and I'll be happy to talk to you about that. But do not let your rate lock expire not get in the nightmare situation where you're going to have to come up with additional funds or worst case scenario maybe not even buy the home if you're not uh, paying attention to your rate lock and when that timeline ends so now let's look at the next step the 
the next one's pretty basic, but it's still great information. You want to check on your utility. So make sure that you know how long it's going to take and what the tra utility transfer looks like. As a broker, I do that for my, I help my buyers with that. Um, our team helps them with that as well. Not a problem at all. But if you're not aware, if you don't have somebody talking to you about that, just be aware sometimes, especially if there's a holiday or something like that, you're going to want to have the, that done ahead of time with the dates done ahead of time. Another, another key consideration when building a new home is if you're building that home and, you're, and you have school district concerns, you're gonna wanna make sure that that home is not too close to a school district line. True story, uh, my wife and I, we have kids that were in high, you know, wanting to go to a certain high school. Luckily, uh, well, we got a notice that they were considering doing some rezoning. Ultimately, it did not happen. Had to get a lot of petition signed and a lot of people had to do a lot of legwork to not have that rezone. If that would have, if we would have been rezoned, it would have been a big problem. So when you're buying a home, a new home, or really just any home, and if you're super interested in what your kids in a certain school, you know, make sure that you're well within that school district and not on a line that might be right in between that school and another school. Because when that happens, I mean, our, we probably would have had to move. So don't want that to have happen to you either. Also, another great tip is if you have to go to work or maybe to church, or if you have uh, medical concerns going to a hospital, you're gonna wanna go to uh, that neighborhood and drive to work at the time that you would go to work. So it doesn't really work if you do it during the weekend or the evening. You wanna see what that looks like ahead of time. You don't wanna buy the house, move in, then realize it's a nightmare to get out of the neighborhood or it takes way longer to get to work than you thought. So kind of basic, but that's really good information when possible to do that. If you can't do that at that time, then see if you can have your agent do it or a friend do it or a family member do it. Now let's look at the last step. If you're buying a new home, new construction home in Marietta, you also want to check to see if they're opening any other phases. So great tip is if you can be one of the first ones in a neighborhood or one of the first ones into a new phase, a lot of times you can pick up some instant equity or you're gonna, your house is going to appreciate a lot faster. Um, so maybe instead of being the last one in a neighborhood or the last one in a certain phase, you might want to be the first one in a new neighborhood or the first one in the second or third phase. So that'll help a lot. A lot of times what happens is their lot premiums get added toward the end, some costs go up toward the end. So if you can get into a new neighborhood and be the, one of the first ones in, or if they're gonna open a new phase and if you can wait just a little while longer, Great tip, great for your uh, financial situation, generally speaking, usually, um, to be able to buy, be first in or wait and get in, to be the first in to the next phase. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're making a move to a new construction home in Marriott, I hope this helped. I'm Dan Hillsman. I'm a real estate broker. I've been helping people move for a long time to their dream homes, move up and, uh, and move into the area. Happy to help you too. You can reach out to, you can give me a call, send me a text and email or schedule a Zoom call in the calendar link below. However you want to get a hold of me, I've got your back when making a move to Merida, Georgia, Powder Springs, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, and all surrounding areas.